Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I was actually connecting with someone who was actually using Bifold to produce their own wallet. And I got distracted. I was highlighting all the good things that we're going to talk about a little bit here. So my name is Clasio Verjão. I'm here with the Kip Menji. Menji and uh, we're working on a project called BC Wallet, which is uses Ares by Fold as our core um, framework. We're going to talk a little bit how we started first. Uh, so we're looking for a wallet that is user friendly, and that's user friendly to the generic to the uh, end users. We found that a lot of the wallets that are currently exist is a little bit by developer for developers and uh, shows a little bit of too much of the Iris protocol. And he wanted to make that experience very user friendly and easy for the average user. When we look into what is out there, we had a few options. We start from scratch. We're gonna be developing your own wallet. We're gonna start our code over again. Or we can leverage something that exists. And we looked around on the open, open source community and we came across Ares Mobile Agent uh, in, uh, that was written in React Native. Um, that provided for us a starting point to our product. Um, Ares Mobile Agent React Native was initially uh, a product, uh, uh, more of a, like a reference implementation of a mobile agent. And we made some contributions to make, to turn into make some changes to a framework where we wanted to enable other business organizations, agencies, or government to, to be able to create their own wallets. Um, one of the questions that we had at the beginning as well was in relation to, do we fork this project and, and start developing our own? Or what should, how should we get started? We did not start with a fork of the project. We started with our own repository. And we started with by applying patches to that repository, to the changes that we made to that upstream repository. That got us up running quite quickly and easily, but we noticed that quite uh, also uh, quite uh, quick, those managing, managing those patches quite, uh, was quite cumbersome and problematic, time consuming. So we quickly looking into how can we create how can we make some changes to Bifold that it works as a framework and enable us our customizations, but it's still being connected with the upstream project. Uh, we have a very uh, strong direction and a strong, we're very motivated to, to be connected and work in open source community in everything that project that we are doing in British Columbia. Um, and we wanted to stay connected with the community. And that's some of the changes that we've made to Bifold to enable it to be a framework. Um, Akif is gonna show a little bit of Bifold right now, and then I'm gonna do a quick demo of BC Wallet. Perfect. Thank you. So as Clasio mentioned, uh, Bifold is the collective work of the open source community to build a reference Aries mobile wallet. So we'd like to thank our friends at Indicio and Animo for their contributions on this because um, they're kind of the people that spearheaded the initial project and we kind of just took it on. Um, it's written in React Native, um, and it uses a, a, a AFJ under the hood, which is another Ares uh, um, agent implementation uh, built in JavaScript. Um, so AFJ uh, primarily focuses on uh, mobile VC solutions, um, and it's consumed as a library uh, in React Native. So the wallet that uh, we've been working on supports uh, VC or verifiable, verifiable credential storage from issuers. Um, it can respond to proof requests, and it can engage in peer-to-peer -peer messaging um, right out of the box. So let's, uh, let's get right into our demo here. So for that, we have our wonderful BC Wallet Showcase. Um, so in this case, I'm going to be using the Bifold Wallet, which I'll open up in a second. So just let's get past this screen. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna be functioning as Alice again. So Alice is a student at Best BC College. And uh, to make her student life easier, Best BC College is gonna offer Alice a, a digital student card to put in her, in her wallet. So in this case, I'm using Bifold. Um, and you'll see that we have some onboarding screens here uh, to just tell us about what the wallet's about. Um, uh, Classio will show you how we've overridden these uh, and customized these for, for the BC wallet in the next part of the demo. But we're going to skip this. 
Um, we're going to skip the uh, terms of service, which again is also customizable. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just enter a pin. And we just have to make sure that our biometrics is enabled. Okay, so now that we've initialized our wallet, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect with Best BC College. So I'm going to enable my camera. I'm going to scan this QR code. And then in just a second, I'll be issued a, a credential or I'll be offered a credential. And as you can see, um, I have a first name, a last name, and it has an expiry date on this. And with this connection, it, it, crea it creates a, a long-standing connection to Best BC College. So down the road, you can have future interactions. So we're going to go ahead and accept this credential. And sometimes the first one takes a second, but... It's on the way. Should be coming. Okay. It worked. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the reason is, is as a as a reference implementation, we support a number of different ledgers. Now, I know some work has been done to try and improve uh, how we access the ledgers and loading them up. But sometimes that first credential can take a, a little bit. But uh, we'll definitely work on improving it. So, so here in our credentials list, we have our credential now, and uh, we can go ahead and now use this in in proof requests so that we can we can have some nice interactions online. So, so let's say, for example, uh, you know if if you're a valid BC, uh, best BC college student, you can actually get a, a discount at us, like a student discount at a store. So, so we have cool clothes online, and basically all they want to see is that you're a, you're a valid student, and you'll need to present your student card here. So the proof that they're asking for uh, is that you're a student. So in order to do that, again, we, we scan this, uh, this connection request. And here, they're going to ask. They're asking for a predicate proof, so all they're asking is that we're a valid student at this point. So we're not actually, uh, we're not, uh, we're only sharing that the credential has not expired. We don't have to give any other information because that's, that's part of the, the beauty of verifiable credentials. So we're going to go ahead and share this, and we're going to send that information securely. And once we've done that, we can now receive a discount from uh, Cool Clothes Online. So in this case, um, it only asked for the information that we needed from the verifiable credentials. If you remember that there was a name, a first name and a last name, we were not provided. We didn't have to provide that, uh, that information. Now, in the second use case, we want to book a study room. And uh, in this case, they might ask for a name just so that they know who's booking it. So here, here they've asked um, that I present who I am and so that they know that they can book it under, under the name Alice. So I can choose to share that. I can choose to decline that. If I choose to decline, the interaction ends here and uh, we move on. If not, I can share it. And that way I can uh, book my study room online. So, so that's, that's the um, issuing and verifying. Now let me see if I can get... Uh, Oops, let me see if I can get peer-to-peer uh, -peer messaging working. So I'm going to connect to um, sorry, a, a CLI version of Faber. And in my contacts, you can see Faber is an agent there. And I'm just going to um, send it a, I'm going to send a message from Faber to Alice, and as you can see, we have peer-to-peer -peer messaging that is enabled uh, right out of the box in Bifold here, so I can also send a corresponding message back to Faber if I wanted to uh, in this one. So, so that's Bifold. Uh, this is completely open source. You can go and use the wallet uh, as is if you want, but you can also customize it, which is what we've done with uh, the BC wallet. So uh, Klesio is going to showcase that now. 
Green is not your favorite color. We have one in blue. <laughs> So thank you, thank you. He's not trusted on my computer, so I can't uh, connect to his. But uh, so here's okay. here's okay. BC Wallet. But yeah. thank you. Go ahead. Um, okay, so if, if green is our favorite color, you can do it in blue as well. So just uh, as of uh, last week, uh, we now have BC Wallet available in the App Store as well. Um, I think it's one of the first available from from a government. Um, but that's available in the App Store. So try it out um, and provide some feedback. Um, so, for instance, a key show by Fold, which provided some, some of the, on the onboarding screen just as a placeholders material. And we're able to customize and provide our own real information on what we, as from BC, want our user onboarding experience to be. Um, so, those are our code, our change, our customization. It's based on by Fold as a framework, but we're able to just customize or provide the materials that it's in that onboarding screen. The other thing is the terms and conditions. Uh, unfortunately, our lawyers are very, uh, uh, very precise on how they want us to show those terms and conditions, and they want the users to extremely to be able to scroll all the way at the bottom and read them all and click on that I accept buttons. Um, there are some conversations about how we're going to make this a little bit easier, but that's how what we got so far. We're going to create a pin for this wallet. That, that, that pin, the wallet is going to be locked, so only, one, you, uh, only you are able to unlock it. My pin is not very secure. Um, oh, this one we have biometrics. Uh, and I guess, Akif, you're going to need your biometrics. Or your closed face ID already unlocked. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so, so yeah, so, so now we have the same, it's the same primitives and the same bifold experience. We have the bottom that looks the same. We have the scan credential. We have the list of credentials right here. Um, and I'm going to be, I think probably need to click leave. We're going to be restarting the demo. We're going to be doing the same demo, but now I'm going to be using VC Wallet, which surprisingly enough is going to be the same user experience. There you go. So the first step is connecting. And I got my credential. I accept. <laughs> you notice that too? Um, yeah, this is, you're going to notice, that's one of the things that, uh, because of the extensions points that we enabled in Bifold, we're able to do some early customization of the, of the wallet. And this is kind of a preview of a feature that is coming to Ares by Fold as well. We're going to be enabling uh, issuers to provide some metadata information about how their, uh, their uh, item or that credential is going to look like into the wallet. So that is coming soon to by Fold. We have a preview now into BC Wallet. So we're able to provide that nice uh, look and feel of a credential. Then gonna continue, clicking next. Um, I'm gonna over the same, the same scenario. So now I'm gonna be getting a student discount in a clothing store, and I can't hold two devices at the same time. And 
quite easy. The same process, the same predicate. Only uh, the clothing store is only requiring or requesting that do you have a, a valid student credential? That means that hasn't been expired. The same process. Everything ends just as it should. And the last one is that uh, the one that you provide with the. Uh, you want to reserve a study room and it will re request you to provide with your name so you can book a room. The same ideas, ask for a name, I will accept that. And that is BC Wallet. So uh, I'd like to highlight that through Bifold now as a framework, you're able to create our organizations or any uh, 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 government body is able to produce their own branded wallet. They can change the look and feel, they can add new features if they want to, uh, but they can still remain connected with Bifold as upstream project. One of the key things that we, we, we want to do and we are doing right now, we are committed to support and keep Bifold up to date and maintain as close as possible. We're working with other provinces in Canada and we want that onboarding in other provinces to be able to create their own wallet as quickly and as easy as possible, right? So that's the investment that we're, that we're doing that to be, uh, so that we can guarantee that other organizations are able to do so. Um, just quickly go back. So some of the things that we adding it added extension point right now is regarding to the branding color scheme. You can override and define your color scheme of your wallet, how, how you want to look and feel. The terms and conditions, you're able to define your own rules, your own terms and conditions. Uh, the onboarding carousel, uh, go, you're able to define how many pages you want and how do you want, to, how the contents of that carousel wants to look, uh, wants to look like. Um, the authentication is something that we are also working on. It's not yet there. Right now we are uh, connected with, up with the bifold by mechanism, but we are working with other provinces to add more customization. So we're gonna be able to maybe say that in your wallet, the user must uh, only have a pin, that's, the, that's a restriction, or you can allow your users to enable biometrics, or you, you, you want to uh, have biometrics enabled by default, right? So some of those authentications will be coming, will be coming soon. Um, and if you want to learn more about Bifold, uh, contact us. We, we also provide some help on the Discord and the Hyperledger channel with uh, other, other members of the community. Um, get to know more about the, the code behind Bifold is actually AFJ, so Ares Framework JavaScript. Uh, so we, uh, I, I would suggest that you also connect with that community. It provides really the core functionality to Ares Bifold. Um, this is some of the names of my team right now that we're working with BC Wallet. So I just wanted to make sure that I acknowledge and thank every single one of them. I keep being one of them and representing my team here. So they've done a really uh, a, a lot of work and working on the community. But I also want to highlight that we have the BC Wallet team, but it would not be possible if it wasn't for the open source for the Hyperledge community. Some of the work that was done prior, some of the initial work that was done into donating the code base to Ares by Fold. So really thank you for, for all the community to, that, that has been done then. I just got one more thing to say too. Um, on, on that note, if, if you guys are interested in learning how to build out a mobile wallet, I believe the AFJ community is hosting a workshop on Wednesday here at the Global Forum, so please check that out. Uh, they're a fantastic community, really active, um, and if you, if you wanna learn more, they're a great uh, group of people to learn from, so. Yeah, and now I guess we're just open for questions. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, I'm just gonna repeat your question in case it's being recorded. Uh, so uh, the question was, does Bifold provides any queuing system uh, for receiving multiple credentials at the same time? Um, so the answer to that is yes, sort of. Sort of yeah. It's not exactly a queue, queuing system, but it does receive all the message and then it's create a record of it in the database and it's able to accept to receive all of them. 
the user will be shown with a notification uh, to accept those credentials. So everything's going to be received. It's not a very nice queue system right now. It's one of the things that we are working on. But it does enable you can receive multiple credentials, multiple requests at the same time. And you just action that in different time. It's asynchronous. So it's done through uh, notifications? Yeah. Yes, through notifications. So we'll see a list of So, so right now it's it's one workflow at a time for each credential, but there are thre so the records have thread IDs and all of that's enabled in AFJ. But in terms of bifold, it's still a little bit simplistic in terms of we showcase one credential at a time, you accept one credential at a time. Down the road, it would be awesome to be able to do multiple credentials. So for example, if I can give you a batch of credentials, or you can uh, prove using a batch of credentials, or even to be able to do things like I want to be able to prove from specific types of credentials. So the, co the code base will continue to evolve. Uh, I think this is just the start. But the, f the great thing is, is we have a production wallet that is, is capable of using this. It's, it's ready. And it's just gonna. We're just gonna continue building on it. So, and if you're if you want to help out, by all means, please get involved. Like, <laughs> contributions are always welcome. Yes, our wallet is available on the both app stores and Google and Android and Apple app stores. You're able to download them. Uh, we're in production in a sense that we it's gonna be available right now for our use case or uh, early adopters. It's gonna be. Uh, that we're working with lawyers from the uh, province of BC to be issuing credential is not in the full rollout in the sense that the average residents won't have their digital credential yet, but we are working towards that. So there was, uh, there was some underlying security tests based on SDK and some of the primitives that we use behind the scenes. Uh, but there, wa there was also a security threat assessment that was done by our internal team. And one of that recommendations actually should be done a uh, third party uh, security assessment that it's going to be in the works and going to be done soon. Um, so, yeah, there's going to have, we've done some, there's a more in depth, uh, um, dynamic uh, security test coming down. Yes. Yes, we are definitely planning on, on publishing that into, again, the Ares by Fold community. And again, creating issues and adding that to your backlog, any issues that arise from that. Yeah, th there there is some some new changes that we 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 just saw some changes to to, to the to the AFJ uh, project that enables us to now not there there's a few points out there that is causing delay. There's a connection to the mediator servers, and there is also when you get a first credential, you need to process some metadata from the ledger. Uh, there's the fact of you need to find the ledger that is that is responsible for responding to this credential and getting some metadata about is the credential. Uh, uh, revoked or not revoked, right? So, so there's a few steps there that I, I think we're going to be putting some work on, on improving the performance on that side. Right. So right now, uh, Ares by default does support multi ledgers. Um, um, there's a number of, of ledgers that are supported in there, and we're going to be supporting more. And. I think maybe one more question uh, uh, before we go. Go ahead. <laughs> it's it's a mobile. It's an edge wallet. So there's no centralized service provided. With the gov we as the government, British Columbia, we provide a mediator service, but we do not store credentials. Uh, 
we don't need to run a million medi mediator service. We need to make sure that that mediator service behind the scene is uh, scalable. Uh, that mediator service that we're using right now, it's powered by Akapai, uh, the Ares Cloud agent in a written Python. Uh, we are going to do some work in regard to scalability and test and, and test how, uh, how much workload it can, it can take. But we're confident that it can support. That, that, that workload that goes to the mediator, there's not a lot of processing power there. Yes. Everything that we use here is completely open source. Everything is open source, including BC Wallet. If you go to the BC Gov uh, uh, um, GitHub repository, repos yes, <laughs> uh, you can find BC Wallet under there. So our BC Wallet is also open source. If you want to have an idea on how what the work that we are doing, you're welcome to poke around and let us know what you think. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>